Hello everybody, welcome to Owen Automotive. This is workshop diary number six and we have a lot going on. The shop is full, we're super busy, but really happy to have such wonderful cars here in the shop. First one is this 1965 E-Type in black, an original black E-Type, completely doing a rewire on it for the client. He's kind of managing his own restoration and that's fine. So you can see this early 65 still has the horns in the hood here, but got it all set up correctly with the loop clamps and the right headlights. Big fan of that. Now when I'm doing these rewires, I like to have lots of parts going spare, spare parts. So I have dashboards here with switch gear and gauges just in case we need anything like that. We appear in here and see the main event, the auto sparks wiring harness in there with the fuse blocks and cadmium. Now we are working on the ignition switch. So that's what these loose wires are. That's one of the things we have to wrap up. And maybe we'll do that in this episode. Let's see. But yeah, really nice to work on this black E-type. Looking spectacular. Now this is a BN4 Healy, not sure of the year. Doing a clutch job on it. You can see we take the transmission and overdrive unit out from the inside of the car. So it's fully stripped in here. So that's, it's quite a heavy unit to get out of there. A little back braking, I'm not gonna lie. And at the back here, we have a one owner 1962 E-Type with rodent damage. This is the main event. So we'll see what's hiding and lurking inside this car. Um, but when you open the door here, there is the most awful smell. I'm gonna hold my breath. And um, we can kind of see what's going on here. There's most turds and urine everywhere you look. So it'll be interesting to see what we find. And I also want to figure out how they got in there because we want to seal up these cars. We don't want this happening again. So yeah, very entertaining. Let's get into it. All right, just rolled the mouse condo out of the shop and look at that. Look what was hiding in there. My dad said at least he died in a good car. <laughs> so I got lots of stuff here. You see I have some weird moisture in the headlight scoops. And the whole car has like this film all over it. I think it's, I think it's mouse pee. I'm not quite sure. Uh, when I open the door here, it looks like there was a, there's a nest inside this door. Just the way that I see this dripping here from the urine and the stain going down. And then I think there was most turds all over this car because if I look in the channel here for the trunk lid, it's a lot of stuff going on. Furthermore, I have moisture here from condensation in the trunk and it just smells like mold. So all that has to come out as well. But I guess first things first, want to get the soft top down here. I'll put some PPE on and uh, we'll see what's hiding inside this radio console. Got it open there. Center one. Okay. So I should just pull up. And there we are. Jeff's helping us today. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Nice to get some fresh air in this Ooh, thing. Yes, thank you. I don't quite know what that is. Kitty litter down there? I'm not sure. That's rat, what? Rat bait? That's rat bait? Oh, geez. For mice. There's definitely evidence wow, here. Wow, this car looks very original. Look at the original dotted aluminum here. Original shift knob. Wow. Okay, so the main event, let's uh, take off. We need a Phillips screwdriver. No, sorry, a slotted screwdriver, and we'll take off the ashtray. Get my PPE going. I don't want any of this rat crap in me. Oh, it stinks. Oh, the smell. If only there was smell o vision, everybody would be running the opposite direction right now. <laughs> I think there's, a, there's probably nothing living in there, right? Well, I'm not going to say. <laughs> yeah, he was last night. He's on the hood. As long as we don't have a Willard situation. You ever see that movie Willard? No. Yeah. 
the house, the mouse house. There it is, there's one of them. Yeah. There's the first house. Yeah. Oh. Oh. No? Oh, we'll see. Let's see. Oh, it turns out falling down. Oh. Well, it's looking not bad. Yeah. So, we see a lot of corrosion here on the backing plate of the instrument panel, that's no good. Original wiring harness. Um, looking just so-so here. It's been eaten up a bit, but looking pretty good. Uh, I don't see any offending nests, so that's a good sign. Next up, we'll take off the dash top and just see if we can peer into the cavity inside there. Go over the, the, the uh, steering wheel. Let's pull it out. It's a nice dash top. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty respectable, really. Okay. There it is. They got in right there. I don't know if we can see that. There we go. So if I look down in here, there's a booster opening down in there. And the grommet, I don't know if you can see it down in there, is half chewed away. That's how they got in, right down there. Just been doing some of the worst work I've done in months, stripping out this awful smelling carpet. And then we can see buildup of urine and feces here. It's totally disgusting. I was just taking up this hard door here underneath the seat. And there's a stream of urine there. And in the drain plug. I mean, how many animals were in this car? Pretty unbelievable. All right, back on the black E-type here. And I have this ignition switch. And I want to save the original ignition switch. It, it, it just has the right uh, stamping on it for the key, and that's the original key, so it'd be nice to preserve. Now, the way this works is on the back side here, there's the spade terminals for the wiring harness, and you can see the contacts where we want to bridge both sets of them. And Jeff here is just going to turn this. You can see that, the, that it bridges both of them by the rotation of the key. And now what I found is that these things fail because corrosion develops in the rivet area here. So just to be sure that doesn't happen, doesn't melt the harness, going to just put a big blob of solder on these. Uh, they're kind of peened over pins and that'll make sure that this thing doesn't burn up in the future because that's what had happened in the past and we had to put this one back on. That's why it's kind of black right here is because the uh, it just loses its connection through corrosion and then you're into trouble. So I'm going to put some blobs on here, put it together and get it back on the car. Okay, let's see how this goes. Just going to heat up the terminal on its own there with the soldering iron. Get that in the light so everything's nice and warm. And uh, we'll hit it with some flux here, I guess. Okay, blocking the light, aren't I? It's blocking, what's blocking the light? The only, there we go. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit of solder on here. Everything's nice and warm. 
Oh yeah, it's flowing, it's flowing. I don't know, it's, we made a solder ball. We don't want a solder ball. It's making solder balls on me. Well, I, see, I didn't take the spade out and clean it, so it's just making a solder ball. Look at that. Son of a bleep. Oh, now we're melting. Okay. No, it's thick. It didn't stick, right? Okay, let's see if we can get a blob on here. Got lots of flux we're eating off. Heat it up. Drop the solder in there. Don't make a solder ball, please. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, thing, eh? It's just there was no way to clean off that spade really well. Ah, it's making a solder ball. Ah. Look at that ball we made. <laughs> All right, everybody, you can see, I kind of fought these spades down in there, getting them clean, but I got a good contact patch with the solder. And so before we seal the deal, just kind of temporarily holding it together with the vice grips, I'm gonna see if we have continuity where we didn't before. And now I turn the key and it's working in both ways too. So if we go for the ignition side, which takes the white and brown wires, it's good too. So with that verified, I think it's time to rivet it together. Awesome. Okay, let's seal the deal here. Oh, these 3 sixteenths rivets are quite... <laughs> it cracks the plastic, right? Uh-oh. Get away from that spade. Oh, these 3 sixteenths rivets are tight. Don't crack the plastic. <laughs> there we go, one side's on. Let's get the other side going. You need another rivet. Uh. Okay. Wonk, it's moving all over. Oh, it broke it. It broke the plastic. Now for some performance. Got the fully rebuilt ignition switch here. I'm happy with the solder. The rivets, the 3 16th rivets were a little harsh. It did crack the plastic here, so I epoxied that up. Don't want it vibrating loose. In the future, maybe a machine screw or the appropriate type rivet would be better. Now this goes into the dashboard down in that hole right here. And I have this special spanner here, the tube spanner that kind of connects into the notches. And that'll let me really tighten this down so in the future, the ignition switch won't be turning the dash. That's a bit of a pet peeve of mine. So yeah, let's put it in. Don't wanna cross thread it. Okay, so now I'm gonna lift it up and make sure that I like the position of the keyhole. Right there is good. I'm gonna use my tube spanner here, socket, whatever you wanna call it, special tool. And I can really tighten down now on the lock ring. And now it's gonna be hard to take out, but it's not gonna spin either. So with this switch in place, I can finally wire this thing up correctly. So the, if I remember right here, yeah. So the brown wire here is giving the power to the ignition switch from the amp gauge, if that's still in view. I'm gonna put it on one side here. And then it is gonna give power, white power, ignition switch power to the fuse block, which is right up here. And it's also gonna bridge power to the starter switch so there we go and finally now what was broken before was this alternator wire connection now this in later cars wasn't this didn't happen at the switch instead this was relayed so we got the last spade here and there we go ignition switch rebuilt and installed
Okay, just about to test this wiring harness and I noticed something that was really a miss and that's the washer motor for these washer nozzles, the little motor that goes in the glass bottle, typically on the right hand side for a left hand drive car. So here's the cable here, it's light green with a black tracer and it pops out here on the left hand side of the car which would be a right hand drive car. So what's happened here is that this harness has been made it's for a left-hand drive car, but for some reason or another, the washer system was for a right-hand drive car. And funnily enough, I also have a light green and black that shows up on this side that doesn't hook up to the harness correctly right here at the switch. So, bit of a mystery. I'm pretty sure this is a fault of the person that made this harness. But uh, anybody that has experience with this, please let me know because... Uh, and I've never seen this before, the washer bottle coming off the brake fluid level switches for the reservoirs. Uh, very unusual. Okay, I figured out a way to get around this washer motor problem. It's so weird seeing washer motor harbor on both sides of the bay. And unfortunately, to make this work, I needed to put an additional wire running through, which I'm not a huge fan of, over to the right-hand side here to connect to this washer motor. Because again, as I said, it goes on the right-hand side. But if this was a super high-end build, I would actually be removing this harness completely and having to completely rewire this car. Because these three wires and those three wires are built into two of the main harnesses here for the car. So... I don't know, I'm gonna contact AutoSparks. I'll see what they have to say about this. Lucky for me, this isn't the highest end build so I can get away with running an extra wire. But if this was one of my high end restorations, guess what, I'd be ripping this all out. So yeah, in the future, I'm gonna to have to look at my wiring harnesses a little closer and make sure I don't have a right hand drive harness here. But it's a hybrid because if I look at this, this is for right hand drive, but some of my lights and stuff and all my switches for the for this side of the dashboard are correct. So something's gone wrong here. It isn't my fault, uh, but I'm gonna make it work. Transmission's going back in the Healy here. It's a massive unit. Look at that. Okay, lots of work done here. Dad's been working on the carbs and the ignition system, cleaned up the seats, put them back in there so this thing can now be moved around and transported. Think it'll run? Will it run? It'll run. Let's see the performance. It'll run. You know it's gonna run. Fuel pump's ticking. early original rad in there. How about that? That's rare. It's aluminum rad. Okay? Okay. Whoa! It's gonna go! Oh, pressure's going up. That's good. I don't know. You're all rich. Well, at least it's running. First time in eight years. And now I've touched every edge of the glass. I know what I'm dealing with, right? Okay, we're putting. Yeah. Okay, everybody, Jason has showed up from Jetstream to help us install the front windscreen into the Black Roadster. And he's offered a lot of good advice on how to trim the rubber and the thick end here of the rubber definitely accepts the glass. I was about to try to install it the wrong way, so I'm really glad he showed up. <laughs> 
I'm not doing anything yet. They haven't paid me, but I'm just going uh, <laughs> to so, fake it for now. So you're just doing some trimming of the lamination surfaces and really yeah, assessing you make what sure you have. There's usually a lot of extra crap there and, uh, you know, dum dum and sealant from previous installs. Since we're reusing the original glass, we want to just make sure that it's uh, nothing going to bind up or hold up our rubber seal. So I run an old razor blade down the edge, make sure it's clean and tidy and there's no uh you want to watch out for any chips in the glass too because it can be prone for uh cracking oh i see uh, yeah look for chips it's a good tip bonus to using a new windshield is that they're a lot more flexible um the older the windscreen uh, everything is uv dried and it's very fragile so I'm telling you right now disclosure we may break your windshield it's not my fault it's yours all right <laughs> so uh but it, you know these ones uh yeah it can't happen we're gonna see some performance here huh we're gonna see some performance now well, we're just cleaning up the edge. Yeah. The rest of it looks like it'll need a nice uh, cleaning later, but you can do that. So that's a very fine, fine steel wool and some glass cleaner lube. Don't want to scratch fine. it. Do don't want to use super... Scotch Bright or anything else. Yeah, you might scratch right. it then, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a little windshield, so we can just say it was like that when we got here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's actually no more. So that's really interesting that you've noticed now that the new glass is more flexible than the old glass. Yeah, you can really pound in a new piece of glass, no problem. And the old stuff's very, uh, very fragile, right? It's just been in the sun for, you know, 50 years. Aged, years, and, right? okay. Aged, so. Yeah. And this one's obviously tinted green. I can see a bit of green yeah, in there. A little green tint. So, yeah. Well, let's put it on. Let's do it. You guys going to do it? No? Uh, no, Rich. You're going to have to do well. Okay. I don't, you know what? I might just do it. Uh... Oh, so lubricating the seal. Yeah, we're going to do a little lube in there. Put a little bit on this. Uh, Trust me on the other side. No, I don't actually. So, so I'll, I'll be uh, cameraman then. Okay. Do, uh, you can be camera. Here you go. Take the, the camera. Some, uh, take the camera. Someone's going to take the other edge. You meet me on the other side over there? Yep. Great. Now don't force it, but see if you can get it to start in the corner. And just drop it in the seal and work the rubber. Yeah. Okay. It's in the corner sort of, but I need to... I'm just there. Seal. And then I can use my uh, yeah, glass tool. tool. I'm using my finger to do that. And right now. Kind of work it. Really oh, need two glass tools, but uh, so see what you can do there and then work it back towards me and let that windshield kind of fall into place. Oh, I lost it. I'm going to jump in the middle here so I can. Oh, she just fell in. She fell uh, out a bit, actually. Okay, here, give me that tool. Just working the rubber gently. I need, I'll get another tool. Yeah, I've got another one of those. These little pry tool sets are so awesome. really need to get her down more and I'm also pushing the, the rubber on the back side the there we go so Technique two is to check the glass in the aperture too before we start, right? Just to see it up against something. You're, you, if you're running with a new windshield, yeah. then yeah, definitely a good idea to actually dry fit and yeah. actually make sure it actually matches. You'll spend a few times struggling over uh, windscreens that don't fit. PG. Over How do you blind ages, a Jag owner? You put a windshield in front of his face, right? <laughs> it's not sitting in the corner here, is it? Well, 
I think the, the rubber's looking pretty good, though. I guess it's just getting that chrome finisher down is what we're really wanting, right? Yeah, I mean your chrome's gonna yeah, it'll, it's gonna it'll, lap yeah, around there, right? Not yeah, too yeah. concerned, yeah. Looking pretty good. Yeah, this that side's a, a little high. It is there the original. Look, the triplex is right there. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, it's your OG. It's not even in the middle. <laughs> or this isn't, right? <laughs> yeah, all right. That, oh, right? yeah, maybe this is. Uh, yeah, compared to It's a factory there. install, probably. Well, she's pretty good, although then. Uh, then it's a little. It's a little higher on that side. This, it may be the chrome fitament too. Do you right? have those chrome uh, pieces? We should do a little test fit oh, right now. Okay. We'll kind of know uh, yeah. if we're in the ballpark or not. If they need to go down or up. Where'd they go, Jeff? Right here. Yeah. Oh, we got a paying customer. We yeah. <laughs> better get out of here. You might want to cut that one over there. Well, this thing here, I'm not worried about. I don't want to cut that now. That's not my. Uh... So, yeah, this is how to install your e tape windshield in seven minutes. Oh, yeah, that fits. Yeah, it's good. It's it's bottomed out. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, good job, Jay. So, what are we doing there? This We're is how uh, you charge uh, two hours labor for seven minutes work. That's right. <laughs> it's not the seven minutes. It's, I knew you guys would still be here if I didn't show up. Trying to get in there. Possibly worse, broken. So, and I haven't finished yet. So when I get paid for half that uh, three and a half hour, we'll come back and finish it out. Strip in, so stay tuned next week for yeah, uh, yeah next week. Chrome, 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 and we need to get it installed. So see, we're putting a bead here way deep in the rubber. Oh, I was. <laughs> there we go. Oh, now we're in there. And if we do get any um, seepage, we'll leave it and we'll take it off with a razor blade later. Okay, the wiper arms in the way a bit, but we're going, we're putting a bead in there. <laughs> Making really good progress here with the 67. Off camera, I've done a lot of body fitment work. This should be done by the body shop. It's not really a mechanics job, but here I am. I refit the front nose, I reshimmed it put the rubber in and have it all, I fit that all nicely. I had to completely reattach this door in the correct orientation, fit the rubber and refit that. And I'm really happy with the result. It's kind of tough work. And I can see why the body shop usually forgoes putting in all the seals because when you put them in, it just ruins the fitment. I'll show you what I mean here at the back at the, at the trunk, the boot, I'm really suffering. So I had this boot trunk lid fitting down just perfectly without the seal then when i put in the seal it sticks up really proud see that it's really ugly like over an eighth this is the seal that's in there maybe there's a better one out there i'm not sure it crushes down pretty good almost to nothing but it just has the effect of lifting up that trunk lid i don't like it if anybody has any tips please let me know because i'm kind of stumped on this trunk 
Maybe it'll have to live without a seal for a while. I'm not so sure. So the next job I want to do is the sugar scoops, the headlight scoops. Here they are. There's a pair of them right there in steel. I've painted them up in a really bright silver. Originally these were gunmetal gray, a little a medium gray, but this is all I had. And so I sprayed them up quickly. I do like the bright silver. It makes it look more like a Ferrari. Now these often, it's a pet peeve of mine is the fitment on these. Usually when I see these fit to the car, they don't match the leading edge very nicely. And that's because when these are in, there's spacers that go on these studs back here that really point it up, down, and left, and right. And I do have a few of the original ones right here I can show. These came off these units. This is what they look like. And they'll go on these studs here to space it out. What I typically find is that these require one spacer on the bottom stud and on the inside stud. So let's do that first and see how it fits. First step before the sugar suits go in, I'm going to clean up the threads for the chrome surround for the headlight glass. These are a specific little 832 machine screw. I'm not sure what's coming through here, but when I clean up all the body shop um, um, materials from the nut, the captive nut that's in here, you can see how much falls down and it's nice to do this before the sugar scoop goes in otherwise it kind of falls on the sugar scoop and it looks kind of dirty and used and uh, another thing is that i've had these captives really suffer if these aren't totally clean and free to accept the machine screw so it's nice to do this now and uh you know, it just makes the later assembly so much easier Okay, I got those spacers there. You can see them. They're about 3 16 thick. The original two that came off this car. Now this scoop goes in a particular way. It's a little harder to get in with the headlight in there, but it's worth it because putting the headlight in afterward is no fun. So it kind of goes, you just jabs in here, angles inward a bit, and there we go. It's in. So now getting it started, getting those studs through the bulkhead. Sometimes it's a bit of a fight here, but it looks like it's going to go together nicely here for us. All the way up there. There is a tang here. I don't know if it comes through on the camera, but right here there's a tang. And the whole scoop needs to be above the tang. That's important. I just tightened up one of them. Maybe we can slip the others in place here. There we go. Sweet. I think this is going to work. So let's have a look at the fit here. It's pretty good all the way around here, but we do lose a bit right in the front edge. And then if we look at this sugar scoop from the side, there's a bit of gap over here too. So I think what I want to do is put some more spacers on the bottom stud. I'll show you what that looks like in here, just to lift it up. And so here's the three studs here for the sugar scoop. One here, one here, one here. And I think if I just, I don't know, if can I push it with my finger? Yeah, see if I push it with my finger out, it's gonna lift it up and close that up. So I'm gonna put another 3 16 style spacer on the bottom one. It's a bit of a pain to put this thing in and out, but it's worth it when it's fitting nicely in the end. These never really come out that gracefully. Let's see. Oh, there we go. It's pretty simple. Now it's just the right angle here this comes out. There we are. Okay, for the second and final time, hopefully, I put a few more spaces in the bottom. I didn't have another 3 16 special washer, so just glued some washers on there with some putty. Hopefully this will be it. Let's see. A little perseverance goes a long way. Had to fit these twice, but now the fit's really nice. See, it, it really snugs the leading edge of the bonnet here. There's also this rubber, which I forgot to mention. It's part, there's the part number right there. It doesn't come with the body kit, so it's something that I like to specially order for all the cars. 
And now what we what do we have here? This is a really nice looking and fitting scoop. This is really the first thing I look at when I'm judging a car to see whether or not the body shop or the or the uh, restorer knew what they were doing, fitting the rubber and getting it positioned incorrectly. Just in behind here too, you can see the studs poking out. And this one up here gets a loop clamp for the headlight pigtail. Look at that, got the other side done. Happy to be done with this fussy job, this fitment job. Somebody has to do it. Now I'm gonna finish up this video with a parts hoard here in the back. Parts hoards tend to go over time, so this could be the last time we see this 1962. It's going to an estate sale, and hopefully we will be able to purchase it, but we don't know, so don't know where that one's going. The Healy BN4 with the new clutch is ready to go, so it's out of here too. See you later, BN4. And at the back here, we can see the main event. It's this parts hoard that I just purchased from a, from a passionate, collector who's been uh, assembling this stuff his whole life so when it comes to stuff like this I definitely get rid of cardboard we're definitely going to throw these parts through the parts washer and then there's some metal recycling too so let's organize it see what we got and if anybody needs any of these parts let me know we can do a deal okay got my gloves on we can sit there and see what you got yeah. That might be tier three, because there's some tier three parts. So first things first, these look kind of vulnerable. Got a one Marshall headlight. Don't know what I'm gonna do with that. And it looks, this is a, a Lucas rearview mirror for an E-type coupe, I believe. So that's a nice piece. I think this was shared with the saloon, so there's quite a few of these around. But two nice pieces there. And we have a chrome, chrome box here with some chrome strips. See. Come on up, come on up. Uh, not sure, this actually might have been the channel chrome for an E-Type. That's way out of the back. I think that's E-Type? Both of them, maybe? Somebody didn't know how to take them off correctly and just mangle them. And then a couple more pieces. Looks like somewhat bent and awful looking hatch surround, sill chrome, all leftovers from restorations. Uh, definitely looking rough, 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 rough. I don't know if this is even savable, but uh, I'll keep it around. This chrome doesn't take up that much space. It looks like old fuel lines. Okay, so this looks like junk, but actually these fittings here on the end are quite good. So take those off. And that'll be nice for the collection. The bulkhead connector there. Yeah, that bulkhead connector, that's what I was showing. Okay, now cardboard. I'm not a car old cardboard collector. I've also got more. Oh, another piece of chrome. Oh, look at that. That's also the other side of the rear hatch for me type. That's nice. Awesome. Oh, what we got in here? Well, I don't know. Random piece of trim. Okay, box is out of there. I'm on a, oh, got, that's it, get this box out of here. Okay, so we have an, ooh, an aluminum intake manifold. What do you think, Dad? Yes, yeah, so we can see the enrichment choke tubes on the bottom for the choke. I don't recognize this line on the back. Well, look at that, there you go, gold. An, an original early otter switch, how about that? So that's kind of an easy piece. Definitely won't be throwing that away, but yeah, I don't think, it's really close to um, XK150, except for this takeoff on the back. That's nice, won't complain about the little intake manifolds. Okay, next up, this radiator. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? It's, uh, this is a tri radiator, I think, isn't it? No. No, see how it has the holes in the side? Okay, everybody. Sands come to it. Where's this? There. Where's what's this for? It might just be junk. I don't know about that rad. Got a floor mat. I think it's definitely Jaguar. I think. Jaguar. I think. 
So it's some sort of Jag saloon or uh... Okay, we got gauges. We got gauges here, people. This is a good box. Is that coming through? I see gauges here. Oh, MGB maybe. MGB. Some shoes. Voltage regulator. It's all taped up. This is a pretty rare gauge here, this one. Really? Yeah, look at it. It's a Jaeger, but it's a 110 Jaeger. I've never seen that before. Maybe out of like a TVR or a... It's unusual. Time stag maybe? No, it's back in the 50s. Oh, it's sure. from the 50s. Yeah, probably. It's like a safety gauge here. See, so yeah, this is quite a nice box. TR3 card set, I think. This is for you, Dad. See, the, the TR3 has such a weird choke lever way down there. And the manifold's on upside down. Yeah. Okay, well, it's, it's for you, I think. Okay, this is interesting. Oh, look at this. This is funny. I, I don't know quite what to make of this. It's old, original E-type rubber. Probably original from the factory that came off of a restoration. I don't know. It's probably garbage, but... Yeah, I don't know what to think about old rubber like that. Just perished old rubber. Yeah, this is uh, not really useful for anything. Old window seal and used rubber. So that's definitely a, a bin. We have old clutch release plates and the clutch disc. This is metal recycling. Metal recycling. So now here's some. Video is going to be an hour. Here's some E-type V12 parts, I believe. I don't need these. I don't do V12s, but I think this is an, a canister for V12, ignition amplifiers for a V12, and then if I go a little further, actually, I think there's some V12 hold downs for when the cylinder head comes out to hold down the sleeves. Is this a V12 water pump? Yeah. Look at the water pump, wow. Look at the extent of that water pump. Yeah, so that's a V12 water pump. Not a V12 guy, so you definitely get one of these V12 parts is a lot. And look at that, an original V12 air pump. Where, where are you gonna find one of those? So that was to pass emissions regulations back in the day. Okay. This is a V12 splash panel, or maybe a saloon, but I think it's E-Type V12. I don't recognize it with this big dip down like that. Aluminum splash panel for V12. Hmm, what's that? What's that? Those are Desire Lads Series 2 E-Type. Again, some more old rubber. Not saving that. Spring-type pressure plate. Uh, yeah, no, sorry. That's going to have to be metal recycling. Holy moly, the moment just scratch the surface. Can everybody see what's still left in there? Yeah, look at that. Okay, what do you think about that then? Looks like a Jaguar saloon. I love how big it is. Oh, is, that one, is that for your cars? Everybody, does this look familiar? I think it's Mark II, isn't it? With the horn push in there. I'm not sure it's in very good condition. Nice steering wheel. Now we have some radios here. What's this? Got some radios. What's that radio there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this radio. It's a blaplunked. Look at that, it's a blaplunked. I don't think that goes in an E-type though, so I don't know what that radio is, but it's I don't mind having all the vintage radios, so I'm happy to see that. Another vintage radio. Wow, another Blaplunked. With the, with the white knobs. I, I like this. This might suit an E-Type, actually. Just need the fascia. With the kind of, the winged fascia. Look at that Blaplunked. And it's 
just for punk. Okay, then I have wing, uh, kind of wind deflectors here for a Roadster, likely like a TR3 application. Aftermarket AMCO units. Where's your TR3 pile? More radios, yeah. Okay, this one looks kind of, I don't know what that one is. Oh, look at that one. This one has its ignition amplifier still attached. Another Blaflunked. Wow, look at that. This one's awesome. It kind of has this surround and it has the ignition amplifier too. Nice piece. Okay. I've got some seal beams here. Both just looking pretty generic. Oh no, we got a Lucas seal beam. That's nice. This was original fitment to E type. These are like a, this is what a Sylvania kind of generic one looks like, but hopefully this still works. It's nice to fit these to concourse cars. That headlight's nice. Other headlight's kind of junk. Okay, now what do you think about these jacks? I don't know. Are they saloon? That's MGB. I don't recognize this one. Look how big that is. I don't know everybody, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah. MGB and an unknown here. It's much bigger than the MGB one. Hmm. So unknown jack, if anybody knows, please let us know. If you need this jack, it's yours. Because it's not a, not a new type or sports car part that I know. Uh, we got a generator here. Duplex pulley on it. Uh, these are handy. They can be rebuilt. This one's dated 1958. So nice to have a generator. With the pulley, sometimes we just need just these pulleys. So a lot of little stuff here that can be really handy. Is that an original one? Jay, I don't know. Another radio for you. Another radio? A Titan. Yeah, not very exciting, but uh, a last radio. Can't complain about radios, really. No, there's one more. There's one more. It's a bag. Hmm? It's in a bag. What is it? What is it, everybody? Let's find out. Oh, I don't think it's very exotic. A Bendix, just a cheapo plastic one. Okay. Lost the knob off this one. Holy, so nice box of radios. Can't complain when I'm buying radios. Ooh, look at that. See, this is exactly why I don't keep old cardboard around. Look at the mold in there. Can you see the mold in there? Yeah, not good. Don't want that in the basement. Okay, where do we go next? Uh, luggage rack. I don't know what that's useful for, but maybe on the back of me tape, I'm not sure. It looks like it's missing hardware to mount it. Oh, I see. So, yeah, I wonder about that luggage rack. Well, Old belt, rubber, not interested in those. We got a big tension tensioner that goes with the belt stuff. Okay, here we go, another mystery. Another mystery radiator. What do you think? What is this? It's not E-type. There's an otter switch right here with the tanks above and below. Maybe it's a B12 E-type. No, a B12 would be bigger, wouldn't it? It looks old with the spout the way it is. It's like the E-type era, it has the EW drain on it. But yeah, does anybody know where this radiator goes to? Because I certainly don't like to find a home for it. Okay. What next? Camshafts. 
definitely look petrified. Again, I gotta get rid of this paper material. That holds a lot of odor and nastiness. Um, but always nice to have camshafts. They bend really easily, so I gotta be careful with them. Another set. 3.8 intake. Okay, camshafts. All of these camshafts have been bend quite easy. Well, next, here we go. There's a big arch. Look at that. Passenger side dashboard for E Type Series 1. What a nice piece that is. It has a really funky choke knob on here. But uh, nice to have this mechanism. This one looked pretty rusted out. Look at that. Originally on a red car. That's kind of neat. I can't see the body number anywhere. That's too bad. But yeah, there's another E Type that we've lost. And now I have the dash piece. We have. Control arm. Control arm. Uh, these things are really expensive. In fact, you can't even buy them new, so it's nice to see that. This is an early style with the nipple on the front. So that's neat. Hopefully this pin can be freed up and released from the control arm, but that's a nice suspension piece to have. These things can uh, be damaged, so that's nice. Really like to see that control arm. What else we got? I gotta be careful here. There's some steering wheels. Get these out of here before they get damaged. So we have a pair of steering wheels. Uh, the one with wood looks quite nice, and a polished one with no wood. So if you know where to get that, those wood plugs, that'd be nice to refinish that steering wheel. And this one, it looks. It's, it's a nice wheel, it's complete, but it's been overly varnished over the years. Really heavy, thick varnish. Can't complain though with E-Type parts, I love them. Okay. Okay, so here we have a fuel tank, obviously an E-Type fuel tank. I think this big pad on the top of it really tells me that it's a... Uh, a later fuel tank it has some handles in here. The door handles in there. <laughs> uh, I'm not a fan of old tanks, but if somebody was on the budget, maybe you could acid treat this and coat it inside and reuse it. I think. Hmm, I think it is series two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how there's all these uh, hoses coming off the side here for the vent. All three of them there. That's definitely a late series two feature. Um, this is probably going in the metal recycling bin unless my dad sees it. So I don't like to keep all the fuel tanks around. But we're getting down to the end. There's an the exciting thing down here for you, Dad. Yeah. Look at this. What do you think of that? Whoa, that's what I need, isn't it? So that's extremely rare early fiberglass transmission tunnel, and they always disintegrate down to nothing. So you can have that and put it on your own car. What do you think? Oh, thanks. That's great. Yeah, it's way better than what I got. Another V12 splash panel, original. Uh, where else are we going here? Uh, closing panel for a hood, that's uh, metal recycling. Hood hinges. Uh, this is a part that never really goes wrong, I don't think. But here we go, handy to have, original hardware. It was an original red car that we've lost, look at that. Okay, we have the steering rack for an E-Type. So these can go wrong in a lot of ways. That cup there, look at that. Oh, it's spring-loaded, isn't it? So you can get the new cups, you can rebuild them, but it takes a lot of time and money to buy all the parts. If it's not bent, it might be rebuildable. Yeah, usually you get parts like this that are out of a car and they're out of a car for a reason and that's because they're no good so i'm just going to assume that this is junk but maybe there's gold here maybe there's gold okay we're getting down to the end i have the cam covers look at that cam covers that have been tightened to an oblivion <laughs> look at the beds here for the for the hardware wow that is pretty raunchy the other side's looking a little better. So I think that these are XK manifolds. 
because they're, if you look, oh, there, there's an E-type one. So there's a difference here. You can see the XK ones have a really, really round bed for the copper to land on there. Whereas the E-type one has, is much more, um, what do you call it, smoothened over in this area. There's no stud there either. Well, those are studless. I didn't even notice that. Those are studless cam covers, wow. Okay, well now my interest is really peaked. Studless cam covers are quite rare. This tape is killing me. So studless, this would be like pre-1952. Wow. Okay, so immediately what I'm looking for here are cracks. I don't see any cracks. Uh, maybe a welding blob here. I don't know if that's factory slag or not. Um, yeah, somebody's been up to something here. Look, I think they've been cracked in the past. See the welding? I think that's been modified. What do you think, Dad? Is that welding in there? I think it's been all welded up. That's why it looks so weird on the beds for the copper washer. Yeah, these have been severely worked on. Yeah. They've been re-welded a few times. Okay. What happens is cam cover starts leaking. And the first thing that happens is people start tightening down on all the acorn nuts, the dome nuts. They crack these things right across the two holes. And then we get the repair like we see in this one. Even this one has a bit of repair with the weld in there. So not so valuable with that repair, but very rare units nonetheless. Pre-1952 XK cam covers. Okay, I got, I think this is e tape fixed head kind of a luggage rack parcel tray. This might look crappy, but we have all this original harbor here. Maybe a reference if we need to make another one. Yeah, I keep this kind of stuff. <laughs> it looks like it has another red car. That was funny to say red car is the dashboard. Oh, no. um, more stuff that's kind of restoration leftovers. So stuff like silchrome that always gets replaced and the accents down the front of the bonnet, they always get replaced too. It's hard to know what to do with this. It's their E-tape parts, but it, I don't know whether or not they'll ever be usable. Okay, bumpers, we have bumpers. You want bumpers? We got bumpers. These look like early 3.8 rear bumpers. Um, if they were 4.2, they'd have cutouts underneath. And you can see the condition of them by looking inside them here. These actually look really good. Sorry, I'm not doing a very good job of showing these off. So they look good because I don't see a lot of corrosion or a lot of work being done inside these. So they're quite nice pieces, these 3.8 rear bumpers. USA number one. Okay, so we got three rear bumpers and two front bumpers also nope so here we go we got one 3.8 and one 4.2 now we can see the difference the cutout so with this with the 4.2s you just access the bolt and the nut from the underside of the bumper whereas in 3.8 you have to go inside the car it's a real pain but uh, yeah there you can see 4.2 and 3.8 now this is a long take, we're 22 minutes in. There you are. You found a you are. All right. Holy oh, moly, look at the handles we have today. Look at that, bag full of handles. Full of focus. So there might be some gold in there. See some relays and stuff. That's a whole other discovery. Yeah, should we just give it a try? Okay, we're running out of uh, stuff to look at here. Yeah, V12, what about V12? I like looking at the V12 pile. Okay, everybody. Oh, that's interesting. So this is a really rare piece, actually. This is a underside dashboard piece for a pre-1965 E-type. These are hard to find. This is really simple aluminum. This is obviously an original, so I'm going to keep it as a pattern. And it was covered in Rexine, not vinyl. The difference with Rexine is it's very, very thin, and it kind of has a paper mache like look about it. See that? And I did get some Rexine from my friend Mike May in Hoodsport, Washington. So uh, 
whenever I redo these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have proper rec seam to put back on them, which is really tremendous. But what a nice piece this is. I just love stuff like this. Auto, automotive archaeology. Good. <laughs> this just keeps going. So a jockey pulley. This is the tensioner for an E-type. And a lot of the times these go wrong or they go missing. And it's nice to have a complete unit here. Um, yeah, even it might still actually be good. Wow. But yeah, these are the this is how the E-type tensions its fan belt. Okay, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. I think what we'll do next is uh, I'll just display everything out on the floor um, and we'll, if you need anything, uh, let me know. Yeah, just leave me a comment and, uh, or message me on Instagram or something like that and we can do a deal for any of these parts because uh, I don't know what to do, especially with those radiators. All right, well that does it for the parts hoard. It really does look a lot better laid out here on the floor. Still have some cardboard to get rid of. And I'm gonna send a lot of these through the parts washer, but that's the name of the game when it comes to buying old parts. You're gonna find junk, you're gonna have to clean it and find the gold within. Now I think my favorite piece of all of these has to be that little dash panel down there, that Rexine covered dash panel. That's the first one I've ever owned, so that's really exciting. Those seat belts are really cool. So yeah, again, if anybody has any need for any of these parts, please let me know. I love to reunite old parts with working cars, especially some of this V12 stuff. I don't do V12s, and that's a lot of nice V12 parts for somebody. So yeah, message me in the comments below or on Instagram if you want to get any of this stuff. And that's it for this video, everybody. Thank you so much for following along. As always, if you have any tips, tricks, comments, or trade secrets, like if you know what those two radiators are, i love to hear from you in the comments below. All right, that does it. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.